All right, guys, we just got here to St. John's Basilica. Uh, you can actually see the Temple of Artemis from up here, which is pretty cool. We were there the other day. But uh, we just entered. It was 25 Turkish Lira apiece. Uh, at today's exchange rate, it was roughly $3.50 for uh, one person, so $7 for the two of us. Uh, with the uh, entry fee to see uh, John's Basilica, uh, you have to actually pay to get into the castle. I guess it's the Sulcik Castle? I believe so, yeah. Something like that? I think so. We'll, uh, we'll find out for sure. Yeah, we're going to see if uh, we can make it up to the castle. It'll, it's actually closing. We had uh, some issues with our uh, Airbnb. We had to find a hotel. And so it put us behind, so we only have maybe like a roughly an hour before the place closes. So let's get over here and check it out. Figured we could squeeze in a little bit of this castle real quick too. Let's go inside and check it out. Well, I'll be honest, we didn't get much information on the uh, castle here. We really just came to go to St. John's Basilica. But since it is included in the ticket price, we figured we'd come check it out. Very neat little uh, fortification here. Beautiful ramparts. Let's go see what this guy's all about. A bit more of this top of this fortress. There was a sign over there at one point, but it was uh, torn down. Getting any information on this bad boy? Yeah, so it seems that they built it here when Ephesus silted up, mm -hmm. when their harbor silted up. Um, it wasn't, they basically made it smaller and closed it in walls so it was easier to defend. And then they kind of moved the castle here in the mm -hmm. Byzantine area, era, excuse me. Um, that's all I got on it so far. Let's check it out up there. Looks like there was a few places where there were signs here, but they've been taken down or something. So you can see here was, was one, <clears throat> there was one. This building's kind of interesting. Check it out. Hello? Must have been like... A sister? Well, I don't know. Almost... Looks like it'd be a great place to store water, but... I mean, yeah, because maybe they busted this down. And this would have all been closed up. And this would have held water. And then that would be the opening, because that seems pretty square. And then there was another one here, so yeah. It could have been a cistern. It's certainly holding water pretty good. It's actually a little warmer today. Uh, it's, what, February 1st or? January 31st. January 31st. I was close. And it's actually one of the warmer days. The sun came out today. There's no wind. There's no rain. That's like the first time in like three weeks that it's been like a perfect, like still warm day. And I'm actually kind of warm. I want to take a dip in that cool water. There's the sea out there, it looks like. I wonder if you can see Ephesus from here. Probably. I think it's over there. By... Let's, go to this corner. Let's go. So we're guessing right about in there is the turn to go to Ephesus. You would just go down there between those two hills. And uh, Rachel was saying that uh, there was a malaria outbreak or something you were saying? Yeah, when the harbor silted up, the outbreak of malaria happened and so all of the people that were still in Ephesus left and came here um, to the Selchuk area in the citadel um, and that's why it became a prominent area. Get further away from that water supply right. over there, huh? Right, exactly. Get away from those mosquitoes. Yeah, and I guess once it silted up it would have been real low and like the water would have right, been real dank. And gross. Oh, there's all kinds of farmland here. Well, I don't know if there's... Super fertile land. Right? Yeah, I don't know if there's much else to see up here. We'll probably head back down and uh, check out the basilica a bit more. But yeah, she was saying this land is super fertile. Just, it's so green everywhere. Just all around. Just a ton of uh, livestock out here and farmland. It's a beautiful place to farm. As you come down from the castle or head up uh, either way, there's a bit of a collection here. It's a, like a lapidarium area pretty much. All kinds of different uh, Greek writing and symbols as you look around on a lot of these things. It was back there like a couple of uh, legs, like the bottom of a carving of like two men. And there's just a pile of stuff here. All kinds of things here. It's all kinds of odds and ends. So that was a pretty neat uh, recreation of what the Basilica would have looked like here. The 
glass is a little fogged up because it's uh, pretty condensated in there. But if I look here, and then just here are the remains. It's a pretty massive structure. Yeah, for sure. The sign says if it was still standing, it would be the seventh largest cathedral in the world. So this is a pretty interesting uh, area here. This is where you would have done uh, baptisms, where they would have done and where you would have gotten a baptism. Pretty interesting, actually. If uh, you wanted, you could still walk right in there today. The water's a little nasty and there's probably mosquitoes, but you could do a, a self-baptism. A baptisterium, it says. Baptisterium. Pretty interesting little area. I'm guessing this is a sarcophagus here. A few crosses on there, and what would you say that is? I don't know if that's Greek or not. Maybe somebody knows better than me. Right, I know it was, the church itself was built in the Byzantine era by Justinian, who's the same guy who built the Hagia Sophia, but I don't honestly know what language they spoke. And what else did he build around here? Was that the... Um, I think he also built the um, church that was over the Seven oh, Sleepers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seven Sleepers area. Well, let's head around and get some more views. All kinds of interesting little uh, nooks and crannies and turns here. Oh, here's some mosaics. Check this out. I wonder if they've taken any of these and put them in a museum at all. Or this is just what was here and they've left it. Mosaics are always impressive to me, just such time and effort put into it, you know? Especially some of these images you see, they're very impressive. So this sign says this was the treasury. Little different uh, nooks here, where things would have been stored, I guess. And just here was actually some uh, frescoes. I don't know if you'll be able to see them very well, because the light was reflecting my image. But just through here was a couple of uh, frescoes on the wall there. I don't know if that flooring's original. Looks like it's in pretty good shape if so. Actually some pretty good uh, flooring here still. I'm not sure how much of this is original or what's just been placed in uh, restoration. different carvings on this stone really impressive some of the detail that they were able to do back in the day with the tools that they had available oh that's like a big chunk there that collapsed huh Let's see if i can look back i wonder if this was up there or something and it collapsed if you look back this way you get a pretty good idea of the length of this place this thing's pretty neat here like a channel way for water to run irrigation or drainage one of the two let's head down to this far end and see if we can get a good idea of the length of it here's some surviving tile work it looks like pretty intricate stuff let's go walk through this little tunnel here I'm really curious what that big chunk of uh building material there was like that's a huge chunk of material it huge. maybe it was part of the the dome because i know that uh, the same year that this was converted into a mosque it was actually destroyed by an earthquake but it was like a big solid mass which is weird you would think the dome would have been uh like a thin layer so it'd be light you know yeah i mean typically i guess you're right well that was fun Here's the main body of the basilica here, the main center portion. We're actually, we're trying to find uh, St. John's tomb. We're under the impression that it's here. We have not been able to locate it yet. Well guys, I had actually already shown you his tomb. There was a woman who actually works in the like little coffee shop up the way. And I asked her, uh, 
sh could she show me where St. John's tomb? And she's like, yeah, this is it. Now, and she didn't understand me. She was speaking Turkish. And I was speaking English, of course. So I was just like, no, uh, eh, and like that. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's over there. <laughs> she totally got me. Yeah, she did. She pointed us in the right direction. But here it is. He's uh, buried underneath here. here. It is St. John the Apostle. He was buried here. Uh, and there's always been a chapel here since he was buried. But then Justinian uh, built this huge church over it. And when they excavated everything, they said that when they opened the tomb, uh, all the bones were just dust at that point. It's I mean, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty uh, important figure. Pretty significant in, in Christianity, in huh? Yeah. He wrote the book of John. He wrote the book of Revelation. He was said to be... Uh, he was the youngest apostle, and he was said to be God's favorite. Mm -hmm. And he also was the one that was uh, that Jesus told to take care of Mary uh, af after he died. Um, so a pretty significant figure, kind of an important place, I think. No doubt. I wonder if there would have been uh, wood or something above here. I mean, probably something incredibly mm. elaborate, I'd right. imagine. Because this would have been the structure inside of the larger structure. Right. I wonder if they had any portrayals of what it would have been. Right. I bet you couldn't even walk up on up on this platform that we are now. Like, you probably had to only be, right. like, only the priest could. Imagine how uh, ornate this tile work would have all been right here around his tomb. Right, look at that, even this like green marble, you can't even appreciate how beautiful it would have been. This was uh, almost like an amphitheater looking area that would have overlooked it as well. Here's the far end of the uh, basilica down looking back towards the uh, grave there, or the tomb I should say. I think this uh, area is really neat here, it really shows you the overall structure and how uh, grand it would have been. Some of these chunks of uh, stone and stuff are very impressive. Look at the, how like thick and wide that is. I'm always impressed by how many of these big storage pots you find at a lot of these ancient sites. This is where they would have stored I would assume like olive oil, wine, things of that nature. There was actually some back uh, up the way a bit that were capped. They were still in the ground and they had uh, big stone caps on them. But yeah, they would have just filled these up. You know, stuff would have came from the port. And they would have shipped it over here and it would have been stored or it would have been manufactured, you know, in these areas. And then they would fill them up and then cap them. And then in the ground they would, I would imagine, stay cool and preserved. See, this one's, these two right here are pretty far in the ground. But that was a way for them to store uh, different goods that came in. I wonder even they could keep like live fish in them with water or something. It's an interesting little uh, area here. This is like a, an atrium. Here's where I imagine it was just beautiful. Little atrium area, huh? Yeah. With the beautiful view out over this. I think this is was just a mosque, huh? Uh, it looks like one to me. Because if I remember correctly, when we were um, trying to find this place, there was actually a call to prayer on there. Okay. Oh, see, look at their courtyard. They got one too. Yeah, that's neat. Look at this guy up here. Safety first. Check out this area that we were just standing on. It's a... Uh, there's actually an area down there, like... Oh, look at that. There's like wood storage. You can hear water dropping down there. It's crazy. Looks like the security guards are getting ready to leave. They're probably going to kick us out here soon. Well, here's a little view back over the site here. Just about to close, so we're going to head out. But we just wanted to say thanks for coming along. There's uh, quite a bit of the area that you can't explore, like all over here. Right, uh, and the signing's not that great throughout the whole, you know, the whole structure, the castle and mm -hmm. the basilica itself. Yeah. But other than that, it's totally worth your time to come and see, but maybe. Yeah, it was a bit cheaper than yeah. like Ephesus. And you can also buy like a, I was saying in my Ephesus video, if you watch that, you can buy like a group uh, ticket. 
that include, includes uh, this site, Ephesus, the, um, the museum, and also the part inside of Ephesus, the terrace houses, the terrace houses. Yeah. and it's like a, a discount, it's a slight discount for buying all of them, or you can just stop to buy uh, each one because if you buy the full package, you have to use it that same day. And uh, if you if you have a few days, you know, like we went to Ephesus a few days ago and then today we were bored. So we were like, let's go check out this basilica. And so we paid uh, for our separate ticket today. There's also a museum card you can get. That card's not that great if you're staying like a long time, because once you use it at the first museum, you only have like two weeks to uh, use it before it expires. But anyway, just wanted to say thanks you guys for coming along. We appreciate you guys watching. Stay safe and stay sane out there.